terrified of that moment when our last one leaves. For me, it's like if we just keep having babies, then yes. at some point, sure. for sure, I won't have to experience that. But I think the more the merrier. I think this what she meant done. to say, though, this is fun what watching you. We really had about eight years to where we kind of thought we were done with new babies and we were raising the four that we had. Yeah. Crew really just something about him was almost like a parachute, you know, at the end of a race car. You know, it just. It didn't, it didn't force us to slam on the brakes in the negative sense. It allowed us to really stop. And, and I will say, it's just like we notice things about him that we might not have caught yeah. on the first four. Crew has like really done something to me where I'm typically just go, go, go. I have just wanted to kind of step back and say, I'm gonna look for these moments of wonder because this mm -hmm. is what my four-year-old toddler has taught me. It's been this beautiful uh, season to where we've got these four older kids that treat this little boy the way they love on him and, mm. and big brother and big it's sister so him in so, these sweet ways. Crew I mean, has been a gift in so many ways and watching him like- Just damn it, do it again, do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Tell do it again. Again. Well, the renovation power duo might not be expanding their family at the moment, but they are expanding their portfolio after eyeing a Waco, Texas castle for two decades and three failed offers, Chip and Joe are restoring this historic property on Fixer Upper The Castle, streaming Friday on Magnolia Network, HBO Max, and Discovery Plus. Was there ever a point where you're like, Chip, why do we need a castle? Um, for the last 20 years, he's been trying to buy the castle. He got to the point where he wouldn't tell me anymore when he was putting an offer in because I said, I don't want the castle, don't buy the castle. It's sad. It's hard. We're still working through this, yeah. clearly. The irony is that the only time I could have actually have afforded it was the time it actually was accepted, and now here we are, you know? But the other three opportunities probably would have bankrupted us. The plan for the castle is to bring this beautiful property back to its original state. How long did this project take? This was our longest project by, by a long shot. It, it was fascinating, it was fascinating. This thing took on a life of its own and it took longer, it took more money. I would say that's partly why we're so proud of it now that it's on, in the rear view mirror, but during the project, it was exhausting and, and, and tiring. So three and years total. He bought three it, years. we planned a year of design research, um, figuring out where we can get the materials. And then once we finally pushed go, it was almost a year of construction. The Cottonland Castle was built in 1890 and took 23 years to complete. So you can imagine restoring the 6,700 square foot home without losing its unique character was quite a challenge. It's, it's over 100 years old. Sure. So was there ever a point where you're like, we're getting out? Every time I walked in the door for the first 75% of the project. Um, I had to call Warren Buffett about two thirds through it and ask him if I could right. borrow a little bit of money because we there was nobody I knew rich enough to get us across the finish line. I would say this is more like zero steps forward, 12 steps back. That's what it feels like. What was the scariest part of doing this? The exterior stuff like the stone was the scariest decision for me because nice. if you mess that stone up, you know, it's like it's like it's like a facelift gone wrong. <laughs> more than it being on Fixer Upper, more than anything, we wanted the neighbors to be proud of what we did with this thing. And it turned out great and we're proud, proud of it. This is a way bigger renovation than we anticipated. We are keeping all the paneling. We've got to fix this plaster work. What do you want to do with the What's going to happen There's to this? There's two different answers here. OK, OK, I want to hear it. You're at a Y in the road on yes. the uh, castle's uh, uh, future. Go okay. ahead. I think we sell it. Yeah. Um, Why you not? Know? We it's bought it to sell it. That was the that's intention. That's it. Right. So what do you want to do with it? No idea. I don't think Joe and I want to live here literally, no. but when I think about owning a piece of history like this. This is history in Waco, I mean, this sure. is a project that I was pursuing for 20 years. The reality is we need to sell it and we should sell it. But I wonder if it's not one of those things <laughs> 10 years from now, He's you don't regret. look back and wonder, gosh, should we have kept it? What if somebody in the family wanted it? Would you rent it out? Well, this would you Airbnb it? Like this no. neighborhood means so much to us. I think it would be a disservice to the neighborhood if we turn this into kind of a commercial entity in that way. When we bought this place, it was a figment of our imagination. But now, this house is coming together. We did it. Let's go. We go. You're coming up on your 10-year anniversary um, for Fixer Up. Wow. I don't even remember, like, 
so we much. We need to happening. stop and celebrate that. Do you know? Uh, we need to find out like the date for that, and specifically because she got a phone call it was in from a production company, and I thought it was like a scam. But this thing was real. And this world of people now that they they feel like you are their family. You're chipping Joanna to them. And that means a lot. It does, and it and it feels good. But I, I don't think we knew that going into it. You know, it's, it's hard to believe that Joe and I just being who we are connected with people in that real specific way.